What is your current status, Comrade Major? I'm detecting a loss of f- My status? I'm losing shit. I am no cop. I've done a lot of no rap. Was that those bottle? No, no. Enough. There. So, what will it be, Major? Please select the desired pre- So, what will it be, Major? again come back soon we're expecting an amazing new batch of robots for your entertainment the next shell will be even more interesting please come back here for a sequel i see you enjoyed the show so much leave to purchase a ticket please go to the ticket booth at the other end foyer don't forget the snack bar please proceed to the bar did you leave anything in the coat check room please proceed into the restroom leave this place Major P3, I'm waiting for you in the Pavlov complex. Everything is ready for your arrival. I'll be there as fast as I can. I suggest using a car to move between the research complexes. There was a surge of sprout activity on the surface. The place is positively overrun with mutants. Right. Mutants. Got it. Is that all? Just one more question. No. Filatova wasn't there. I understand. You didn't find any gold rings on Petrov's body, did you? Two rings with better one and better two engraved on the inside? No, he didn't have anything on him. P3 out. Saving data. How goes it, Sonny? Still in one piece? Hey, Granny Zena. Long time no see. I've definitely had better days, but yeah. I guess I'm still in one piece. Did I hear right? You finally got that bastard Petrov. Nothing gets by you, huh? Yeah, got him. I got himself before I could get him. Don't you worry. If you got his head, that means this will all be over soon. Then you can get some sleep. Now you're speaking my language, Granny Zena. Mind if I stop by for a cup of tea? Stop by any time, Sonny. By the way, uh, you didn't happen to find any engraved gold rings while you were off chasing after Petrov? No. I didn't, Granny Zena. The trough didn't have anything on him. Oh, that's okay. You just watch yourself, Sonny. Stop by if you need anything. Why have you deceived everyone, Comrade Major? The trough gave you those rings before he died. Everyone else is deceiving me. 
even Dr. Sechenov, and I never saw it coming. On what basis have you drawn this conclusion? I just thought about what Petrov told me. Would you kindly be more specific? Petrov said combat mode was programmed into the bots during construction. He couldn't possibly have reprogrammed them all himself. It's true, goddammit. And why is that? Because Petrov was a pussy. He was a programmer, not a fighter. But these robots know how to fight. He couldn't have programmed them because he doesn't know the first thing about combat. That Natasha was armed with fucking missiles. Where'd it get him, huh? It's a construction robot. Petrov couldn't have armed it with missile launchers. He's not an engineer. He couldn't have hacked into the robot plant and started changing shit around. He fooled the central hub and made it think innocent people were an invading army. That's it. So why would a construction bot have built-in missile launchers, huh? Why would a civilian Drofa have a damn railgun? Or an owl a machine gun? The signs are everywhere. Just like you said, different perspectives. Unfortunately, after analyzing your logic, I am forced to draw the same conclusion. Especially since your suspicions are more justified than you know. What do you mean? Exactly that. Listen to this recording. What duty are you referring to, Comrade Sechenov? Do you even realize that if the Americans find out that your robots can be switched to combat mode, I guarantee your project will be dead in the water? To my profound chagrin, I failed to pay sufficient attention to the phrase, robots can be switched to combat mode. I took it as a colorful expression Molotov used to cast dispersions upon Dr. Sechenov. But it's clear that Molotov was speaking literally. The Politburo knew from the very beginning that Soviet civilian robots had a combat mode. The Atomic Heart Project. Petrov wasn't lying. Sechenov and the Politburo want to conquer the U.S. and the entire world. So what are you going to do now? Think. Comrade Ismailov, this is Verbitsky. I just saw an unknown employee pull a military polymer container out of a truck and put it in the trunk of his white car. He looked frightened, like he was running from something. I walked up to him and told him to stop, but he just thwarted it and drove away from the train station. So what I want to know is, hey, what's that? Holy shit!
That was a surprise. Charles, why does everyone want those rings so bad? You mean the beta connectors? Because they work, but are also considered not to exist. So nobody can prove they're out there, not even Collective after the launch. Especially not Collective after the launch. For Collective, anyone connected via the beta connectors will simply not exist. But they'll be able to see Collective. Yes, all of it. A person with a beta connector will not be able to influence Collective from the inside since they won't exist for Collective. But they will know about everything that happens inside it, just like any officially connected human or robot. But can't an officially connected human or robot disconnect from Collective if they want to? They can just take their thought device off, right? I believe so, yes. You believe so? So you're not sure? Or is there something you're not telling me? I have no data, Comrade Major. 
But no one can stop a person from removing his or her thought device. It's worn on the head, not implanted in the skull. That's good, I guess. We now have access to the scientific testing ground, Comrade Major. You can find valuable weapons in such locations in the future. Yeah, I know your science shit. All you do is deceive honest citizens with the concept of a bright After future. No comment. Outstanding. Let's Maxwell go take a look at the gear Cavendish. that'll help me Facility see tomorrow. Facility 3826 scientists questioned some of their foreign colleagues' fundamental assumptions and decided to recreate their famous experiments in electromagnetic fields and geomagnetism. This testing ground employs special magnetic gravitational test benches to simulate the various potential conditions of the Earth's magnetic field. This allows us to better study underground deposits and find more effective ways to exploit them for the benefit of the Soviet Union. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Please select the desired procedure. Along with the might of the Soviet army, our great nation's climate is regarded as one of the decisive factors that thwarted invading Western powers time and time again. However, Soviet scientists have now demonstrated that low temperatures also protect against diseases and epidemics. Acting as a natural filter, frost removes dust particles from the air and promptly kills airborne viruses, bacteria, and allergens. <clears throat> Only frosty air is safely regarded as completely wholesome. Cold temperatures also stimulate the immune system. This is why this workshop is dedicated to simulating the cold environments of the USSR to help study the effects, both positive and negative, of low temperatures.
access granted. To help advance gravitational wave astronomy, the USSR Academy of Sciences has decided to set up a groundbreaking new testing site for the training of gravitational astronomers who will observe interstellar phenomena from Earth and from space. This building houses Facility 3826's training center for cosmonaut astronomers, or cosmonomers. Here, young Soviet heroes-to-be train to overcome and at the same time exploit the gravitational pull of our planet while avoiding high-power gravitational waves and radiation that could be harmful to the human body.
It should come as no surprise to find access to modern weaponry deep within civilian testing grounds. Science and war have always gone hand in hand. Is that what your programming tells you to think? Shall we say, that's what I believe. Even the cartoons you're so fond of started out as revolutionary intelligence gathering methods, lamentable though it may be. War is the engine of progress. I don't know where an AI glove could possibly get beliefs from, but if you ask me, I'm all about peace. And cartoons. Fading data. The agent of survival.
do you want to do? I ask him and he says... Off that sick shithead, that fucking truth lover. Screw him. So much blood spilt just because he made the sprouts mutate. I highly doubt that Petrov had such a result in mind. He is not a geneticist or a plant breeder, and could not have foreseen all the consequences of the malfunction. Then why the hell did he do it? So many people are dead, and the ones with sprouts for heads had to get killed twice. First by the robots, then by me. Morally speaking, Petrov's action cannot be justified. We are in complete agreement in that regard. Fuck Petrov, he's dead. I feel bad for all those people. I stayed in the service after the war to stop this kind of thing from happening again. And now... You have my sincerest condolences for all that has transpired, Comrade Major. Charles, no one can force somebody into collective, right? Petrov was wrong about that. Not entirely. What do you mean, not entirely? If I'm not a member of collective, how can collective find out about me? It's quite simple. Let's say you walk past a robot. The robot identifies you as a human, but you are not wearing a thought device. The robot fails to receive mental commands from you in response to its queries. So it realizes I'm not in collective and tells the others about it. Then what? They all start giving me shit about it? Essentially, yes. But I can just put my thought on, walk past the bot and do everything I'm supposed to do, then take the thought off, right? Essentially, yes. Then why is everyone so hot and bothered about the rings? I can't say for sure. Perhaps it's an issue of convenience. Thought devices need to be reconfigured every time they are put on. A ring can be taken off and put back on without inconvenience. There's got to be more to it than that.
Charles, the U.S. is constantly introducing sanctions against our civilian robots. Why do they do that? Do they suspect something? The U.S. government clearly has certain suspicions, or at least concerns. Yeah, it's their job to be concerned about their country's security. But they don't have any hard evidence. That means they don't really have a leg to stand on, right? Indeed. That is precisely why Petrov caused the malfunction. Right? He wanted to show the world that our civvy bots have a combat mode. Fine. But the Americans don't know that. So what are the sanctions for? The American government is using the sanctions to find a middle ground between the needs of the capitalists and the growing discontent of the working class. You mean American working stiffs want to get our bots banned because they're taking their factory jobs, and the capitalists want to get more free robots so they can get rid of all the workers once and for all? Quite right. The American government is feeling pressure from both sides. So the sanctions remain moderate without banning robots entirely. They merely set quotas on importing them. So why does the Soviet Union give a shit? Who cares if the Americans sanction us? They're the ones stopping themselves from getting rid of the working class. Well, good. We're all about the workers. The more restrictions they place on the import and use of robots, the fewer of our robots will be located in key parts of the American government when collective launches. So the Soviet government wants there to be as many of our civilian robots in the U.S. as possible when they activate combat mode. That'll make it that much easier to take over the country. I gotta admit, it makes sense. Ah, suck it! Everything's fine. Take it easy now. The bosses know what they're doing. Demon, I haven't even been here a week yet, and I've already seen enough corpses for a lifetime. I thought this place was going to be a regular clinic. I had no idea it was like this. <laughs> Didn't the fact that this place is a secret complex tip you off? You're a little green to be a guard, especially at a hospital. Listen, we're not butchers like those scientists. We're not here to kill people. We just make sure no one runs off. It's fine, really. Him. Him too. Shouldn't we at least try to help him? There's nothing we can do for him. He sat down by your bed like he was hypnotized, and then he just stayed that way. We're the ones who need help now. My God. But you're right. Those shots were shit. They were supposed to help, but now I've got five people from the same collective farm on my hands. Trust me. Something's... something is wrong with me. Call the nurse. Uh, my side... My side is on fire. Hurry. Hurry! Call the nurse already!
Zaharov didn't die, comrade. Zaharov lives. What? Who are you? What are you talking about? I'm an assistant professor from AOC. It matters not. Zaharov lives. Zaharov? He is Dr. Sechenov's closest supporter. A man whose genius may surpass Sechenov himself. It was believed Zaharov perished a few years ago in an unfortunate accident. But he did not. I studied the documents, and all of the most revolutionary papers show signs of his involvement. His personal touch, if you like. I worked with him personally and knew his attitude well. Caustic comments, radical methods, unmitigated interruptions. He is most definitely alive. But one question remains. If he is alive and still working, why would somebody hide it? Eh, sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. Right now it's hard to tell who's alive and who isn't. Autolysis starts approximately 7 to 10 minutes after death, followed by defecation in 3 to 5 minutes. Rigor mortis sets in 5 to 6 hours, then, let me see, complete decomposition in about 5 years. What are you doing? I'm counting. Counting. Everything has to be thoroughly calculated. Precision matters. Observation in detail is the key to success. I am a scientist. I must spend every moment examining and cataloging nature's phenomena. Comrade, do you know many people capable of documenting the decomposition of their own body? What's the point? You can't even record your observations. What? Oh, shit. You have a point. So you will help me. Please stay next to me over the entire period of decomposition and keep track of the progress. You will manage. It won't take long. Give or take 535 to 650 days in current conditions. Fine. I'll go get my notepad. Oh, cut off or cough. You made me lose my concentration. Let's start again.
Charles, what is this place? I mean, what is this complex even for? The Pavlov complex is the origin of all of Facility 3826's biological innovations. Unique experiments are conducted here, involving everything from breeding new species of farm animals to developing new space exploration technology. Outer space? You mean they make moon rovers here, non Chalamet? Space exploration is about more than just vehicles. A spaceship and rovers will of course be required. But what then? What about after humans reach the Red Planet? You mean they breed animals from Mars here? Among other things, yes. In addition to breeding new species of animals suitable for Martian conditions, Soviet science is looking for ways to bolster man's ability to exist on Mars. So what, they're gonna give us gills so we can swim in gas oceans? Gas oceans are on Jupiter, Major. Mars features low temperatures and lethal hurricanes. But you're basically correct. The capabilities of your species have yet to be fully studied. So the latest medical breakthroughs, new life support systems, all came from here. Indeed, Comrade Major. So many geniuses worked here for the good of all mankind. And now they're gone. So, what will it be, Major?
Give me the shot and the rest. I quit the academy to escape the experiments. I'm a doctor. I was the one doing the experiments. How dare they experiment on me? No, I don't want it. No one wants it. We just don't know it yet. Quit the academy to escape the experiments. I'm a doctor. I was the one doing the experiments. How dare they experiment on me? No, I don't want it. No one wants it. They just don't know it yet. Never ends. Death. It 
never ends. Death everywhere. Nothing but death. The launch can't happen. It can't. I'd rather be nowhere. I'm never getting out of here. I don't want to become nothing. The polymers aren't what you think. They're not for what you think is right. The collective doesn't exist. The thing that exists isn't collective. What the? No, get out of here! You stupid dog! I don't want you to put that poison in me! You're incredible, Professor. Your calculations and solutions are so elegant and logical. Your work on mimetic polymer adaptation is an amazing contribution to science. Thank you very much, but it was really a team effort. Uh, I'm sorry, who are you? Ivan Vikov, junior lab assistant at the Pavlov Complex. I work in the archives, but my dream is to work under you. I'm a huge fan of your work. Well, your passion is commendable. Although it is, frankly, a little concerning, the polymers are a quickly evolving scientific field with amazing potential. But I'm afraid passion alone won't be enough to advance it. Let's talk again in a month or so and see what we can do. For now, uh, please excuse me. Science calls. A month? But I don't have a month. You'll hear about me, Professor. You can bet on it.
Tell me, Comrade Major, based on your professional and personal experience, would our civilian robots in combat mode really be able to complete the Atomic Heart Project? Yeah, they could do it no problem. If there were plenty of bots at all the military bases, headquarters, and launch sites, and nobody expected them to attack, they could take the American military by surprise. Just like they did to the soldiers here. What a shame. The world just recovered from a war. And now there will be another. Well, it's not really so bad if you think about it. What do you mean, Comrade Major? If Comrade Sechenov and the Politburo want to take over the U.S. and even the whole world, they won't fight regular people. But civilians do perish during combat operations. You know all about that. If the robots are programmed not to kill civilians, they won't attack civilians. You're a robot, Charles. You should know all about that. I'm a robot? In a sense, I suppose you're right. A robotic glove? What? Neuropolymer gloves won't take orders from Collective? It depends on the glove. Some will, and some will only be able to obey their carriers. I digress. Civilian robots will receive the order to activate combat mode from Collective, and whoever sets Collective's policies will easily be able to order them to kill anyone at all, including civilians. Why would they kill civvies? They're regular workers, farmers, scientists. Shit. So that's what they want the rings for. And what's that? You can take your thought device off and disconnect from Collective, but a bot can't, can it? That means your own robot housekeeper will drag your ass back into Collective at the drop of a hat. They want the rings to put on their own robots, so they'll only listen to them. Correct. Thank <laughs> you. 
prick! You're dead, motherfucker! Take that, bitch! What are you gawking at? That's it, you're fucked. Oh shit. What's capable of this kind of brutality? This poor lady. You are expressing sympathy for a corpse, Major. It's a woman's mutilated body. You had sympathy for people just a little while ago. This person is dead, Major. Make sure your weakness for women doesn't come back to bite your ass later. Something's definitely wrong with you, Charles. I'm gonna ask Sechen out to calibrate you. Thank you. 
Complaint. Listen, I am filing a complaint. About what? About your Stockhausen's disgusting behavior. I was injured, but could have been saved. I was bleeding out and begged him for help. But that stock of yours, and I know you're calling him that ironically, just passed me by. He asked one of these robot ballerinas to step in my throat so that I'd stop making noise. And I died. <sighs> Stock really is a piece of shit, isn't he? Precisely. Precisely, my dear fellow. I ask you to bring this matter to light. Please air the issue with your superiors. It's just shameful. I'm not asking for myself. It's too late for me. But it is the matter of the facility's reputation. He is the assistant to the chief administrator, after all. I can deal with that. Fading data. So, what will it be, Major?
Please select the desired procedure. And now you're gone, Professor. What have you done? <laughs> I was supposed to learn from you, but all I ever got from you was scorn. My self-worth all depended on you, and now... Oh, well. I've still got bullets. I can still fight my way through science. And I stole the box from your office with your favorite music inside. Just so I don't forget, I hid the music box in a safe. The one with the positive password, not the negative one. What will I ever accomplish if I can't even keep a couple of safes straight? The dog. The dog has the positive one.
Freaking critters. What's this place, Charles? A morgue? Indeed. The bodies of the dead are kept here for further study. What do you mean, the dead? There are bodies all over the place. Where'd these come from? There are dozens of them, and most of them are... young. These are the bodies of volunteers who died in dangerous human experiments. Holy fuck. I mean, I get that there are certain experiments that can't be performed on mice or pigs or whatever, so they need living people, but so many. This is completely fucked up. Unfortunately, things don't always go smoothly in science. Sometimes volunteers die. The sub-basement exists so that their deaths will not be in vain. Their bodies are studied to prevent this from happening again. Screw your sometimes. Couldn't they just use the condemned on death row for this? But even that's... Not all experiments can be performed on the dregs of society. Some important and secret projects require psychologically healthy volunteers. And sometimes, these experiments can have tragic outcomes. What could be more tragic? Believe me, Comrade Major, there are things that are far worse than what you see here. Sometimes the deaths of volunteers can lead to a breakthrough that saves millions of lives. This was how the vaccine against the Brown Plague was developed. Let's keep going. This has to end. Now. Right? If you want me to help you... No, no. I want you to help all mankind. That's what I'm trying to do. No, no, no. Let's not waste time, okay? There's barely anything left. I did the analysis. I did all the calculations. This neural network echo that allows the dead to talk. It's the key to immortality. But how? This is just residual emotions. Not quite. I just developed a neural network method for polymer self-adaptation in my head. We can prevent the consciousness from fading and use its impulses to direct machine parts. Effectively, this will allow the transfer of a human mind into the machine, rendering it immortal. So, what do I need? Here goes. Turns out it's really simple. Have you got a pen? I didn't expect it to be so easy. When thoughts are the only things you have, oh my, they become so clear and flat. 
flow so very smooth. D don't leave me hanging. Charles, record what she says. Yes. Yes. I'm fading. Begin by taking a simple Soviet. Available in every home. Hey, lady. You there? I'm afraid that's it, Major. The neuropolymer charge is exhausted. Although, she was on the verge of a breakthrough. Damn, talk about brain drain. Hey, young man, wait! If you want me to help you, I've got better things to do. what you got.
This is fucked. Sechenov is a decent guy. How could he let this happen? An army of bots, killer mutants, thousands of innocent victims. No matter how you slice it, the facility's to blame. Even without Petrov, this place has issues. To say nothing of Collective 2.0. Seriously. I gotta wrap this up and retire. Maybe even get married. What? Nah, fuck that. Your negative brain activity is generating unpleasant artifacts in my code. I told you to stay out of my head, Charles. Get to work. Set me a fucking waypoint, damn it. Fading data. I've got bad news for you, comrade. Don't talk nonsense. Can't you see I'm bleeding out? This complex is full of medical supplies. Just get me a first aid kit. I'm a doctor. I'll be able to help myself. So how long have you been bleeding out? Just a... Uh, for a while, I guess. It must have been an hour or so. 
Are you just going to stand there until I beat to death? Help! I I've got bad co- Don't talk no- I was just- You're dead. And you've been dead for quite some time. I'm sorry, but nobody can help you now. What? What are you talking about, you idiot? Help me! A person is dying here! Look at the size of that fucking thing. What is it? The experiments here involve the creation of neuropolymer endoskeletons for various animals. The goal is to allow them to live in hostile conditions on the outer planets of the solar system. Endoskeletons? That thing isn't gonna attack us, is it? It's huge. The specimens here currently lack any neuropolymer brain tissue structure. They are nothing but polymer bodies at this time. They cannot move. Still, they're freaking massive. Are they for planets with low gravity? Some are, while others are for planets with high gravity. Research is being conducted for all scenarios. In one of the vats, you can even see attempts to breed an organism capable of living in the oceans of Jupiter. So this thing is supposed to live on Jupiter? One day, we certainly hope to create a life form that will be capable of it. What's this thing? A jellyfish? <laughs> the species represents a complex symbiosis between a jellyfish and a coral polyp. It has no clearly defined external shape, but it is assumed that the organism will configure its body independently based on its environment. We can achieve so much by putting science first. Maybe Dr. Suchinoff is right. People will be better off in collective than shooting holes in each other over some national border or something. Are you sure about that, Comrade Major? About shooting? Absolutely. Fading data. I never expected to see Victor like this, in these circumstances. Hmm. We used to be thick as thieves, you know. But Victor made too many bad calls. Now look at him. Thanks to Dr. Sechenov's brilliance. You don't have to lose all of Petrov's knowledge. We'll 
be able to return the robots to their previous state once the simulation is He's already dead, complete. you creep! Keep your hands off him! Relate! Establishing connection. The professor says you haven't slept in three days. I don't wanna. Sleeping pills. Bottle of vodka. Why not both at the same time, huh? You know I don't like that stuff. My brain's a fortress. You know, when I was a boy, my brother was in the dark. So my mother left the light on. It helped him. I hated it. The light interfered with my imagination. I didn't like children's books for the same reason. All those colorful pictures. They were real. Exactly. The books in my father's library were interesting. History. Medicine. Theoretical physics. Science doesn't try to safer or prettier. It doesn't lie to us. It just gives us the facts. So, I knew what I had to train for. And I made another discovery. A monster in the dark behaves predictably. It can be studied. A monster in the light wears a mask and is therefore unpredictable. Which makes it dangerous. Very much so. Moreover, the light is what makes us monsters. Do you understand, my boy? More or less. May I turn out the light? Yeah. Reconstructing illumination.
Wake up. Son of a bitch. What the? Charles, where's Larissa? She hid before the explosion. So what happened to Stuck? Stuckhausen was knocked into a vat of polymer by the explosion and is now deceased. You hypocrite. I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. Huh. Some doctor you are, you grenade-tossing bitch. Petrov and Falatova are cut from the same cloth. There can be no doubt about that. Whatever. We gotta find a way out. Major, you alive? No, I got killed by a grenade. I'm so sorry that happened. I didn't want any of this, but none of it matters right now. So what does matter, you crispy-ass critter? We have to meet. You need to see this with your own eyes. I'll show you everything. What do you mean by everything? You trust Sechenov too much, but he's keeping you in the dark. You have no idea what's really going on. You need to see it with your own eyes or you're not gonna believe it. You got that right. I have no fucking idea what's going on. You will understand when you see it. I have proof. I'll be waiting in the Academy of Consequences. The entrance is inside the lighthouse. Trust nobody. I don't. Yeah. 